First up though, mention organic and people will nod knowingly. Start talking integrated pest management and things might get a little hazy. IPM for short brings together biological control, insects that eat other insects to help reduce the reliance on toxic chemicals. Chris Clark takes a look at how beneficial bugs are working in horticulture. This is a very trying vintage for many of the country's grape growers. After a decade or so with too little water, in many areas this year the opposite's true. What have we got, Rob? So it's at about 1075. 1075, 1080. Um, Perfect. That's not bad for pressings. Loic Le Calvez manages Taltani wines in Victoria's Pyrenees region. So what we need is consistency in the grapes we have and good concentration. With the fruit now pouring into the winery, the moment of truth approaches. This is the winemaker's time to shine. Mm. Nice green juice. I like that. But work's been going on in the vineyard for months. The task is to grow the best possible fruit. It's November and the berries haven't formed on the vines yet. But what happens at this point is critical. Because they're, they're all in the backs of the loose. Matthew Bailey is vineyard manager at Taltani. It's his job to see that the vines thrive. And one of his main enemies is the vine moth caterpillar. And, and what will the caterpillar do to the vine? The caterpillar, um, well, they'll eat anything that's green, they'll eat the leaves. Um, the moths will lay their eggs within the bunch, which the can fruit. cause within the fruit and cause you problems later on as, as the bunch ripens, um, like botrytis, bunch rot, and then you've got real problems. The conventional approach is to spray insecticide to kill the caterpillars. But over the past few years, Matthew Bailey's decided to rely more on other insects to do the work for him. Insects like this predator shield bug, which likes nothing more than munching on a vine moth caterpillar. You can see him feeding on the caterpillar there. Using predatory insects and fewer chemicals are key components of the integrated pest management approach Matthew Bailey's adopted in the vineyard. And central to his method are several insectariums, areas of mostly native vegetation designed to increase the population of predatory insects. Insects from here will travel 100, 150 metres within the vineyard and potentially further than that with um, the assistance of the wind, especially with the small um, wasps. Yep. Between the vines, he plants so cover crops to give insects as much habitat as possible. Well, here we have um, some field peas. We um, use this cover crop to extend the distance the insects can travel from the insectarium so they can harbour in here within this cover crop and then travel further within the block. And One of the key aims is to use fewer chemical pesticides. We used to spray a fair amount of um, insecticides, but with, with this um, new insectarium, we've um, dramatically dropped off the sprays and, um, and thus seen, seen the benefits of that as well. Paul Horn is an entomologist who specialises in integrated pest management. IPM for short. In an IPM approach, we rely mainly on biological and cultural controls and use uh, pesticides as, as a support tool only when required. The pesticides that are used need to be selected to minimise the impact on beneficial insects, which means plenty of lab testing. We want to know not how well the pesticide works on the pest, but what it does to things that eat the pests. So ladybird larvae here, we're exposing them to the insecticide. Biological control can be immensely successful. Parasitism by wasps is one thing. Biological control by 
combination of uh, things like ladybirds, lacewings and damselbugs can eliminate the need for insecticides in many cases. So why doesn't everybody practice integrated pest management? For the last 50 years or so, the, the mainstay of pest management has been the use of pesticides. So to change from that, which is familiar, it's legal and uh, usually works, to trialling something that is unfamiliar and perhaps unproven on uh, an individual farmer's property is seen as quite a risky thing. On a day like this, it's difficult to imagine a better place to be growing lettuce than Tasmania's northwest coast. And Paul Horn's now a regular visitor to these shores. Paul, a lot of growers would say if pesticides work, why not use them? Um, that's been the approach for, for very many years, and people have developed into, uh, insecticide resistance management strategies to prolong the life of insecticides, but almost always there comes a time when the insecticides fail because the insects develop uh, the means to detoxify them and so they become tolerant to those insecticides. And that's especially true with insects with very short life cycles. In integrated pest management, insecticide resistance isn't as big a problem because insecticides aren't as big a part of the solution. The key to IPM is biodiversity and monitoring, creating the right conditions so beneficial insects can thrive and regularly checking the balance between beneficials and pests. In lettuce, Heliothus moth is a big threat. Simple pheromone traps which attract different types of moth act as an early warning system. So in this trap at the moment there's one moth, so it's a very low level of activity. At times we get one or two hundred moths per trap per week. And so that's obviously a, an indication that the pest pressure is very great. And the critical thing is all about monitoring. You know, you've got to have people here two or three times a week checking these numbers and making sure and, and watching threshold levels. Mark Cable was sceptical when first introduced to integrated pest management. Very sceptical. And at the time, we, we were struggling in broccoli um, with platella, diamondback moth, and, uh, and we were struggling with the cost of it too. The, the, the cost of chemicals was skyrocketing, and uh, we were worried of where we were going to go next. But he offered Paul Horn the chance to show him how it could work, and the former sceptic is now an enthusiastic convert to integrated pest management. I gave him a 10 hectare site, and I said, prove me wrong, and he did. And uh, we've been using um, IPM, and, and we've been working very closely with Paul, and not just broccoli, but onions, and, and obviously now lettuce, and, and, uh, and basically all our crops right, right across the range at Harvest Moon. Integrated pest management means different things for different crops. In onions, they no longer spray a just-in-case dose of insecticide here when the first shoots emerge because they discovered that was killing the insects that could counter another threat. By understanding your beneficials, you can save yourself a lot of money and, 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 a, and a lot of grief. Um, so it's really just that whole education, a whole educational process that Paul's taught us about identifying what the beneficials are and, uh, and working around them. Broccoli is one of their biggest and most commercially important crops and it was the starting point for their integrated pest management approach. Well, mainly in the summer here in Tasmania, our, our main pests are um, diamondback moth, platella, uh, cabbage white butterfly, which you can see a fair few floating around today, and aphids. They began by targeting specific pests using less toxic chemicals. And sure enough, the number of beneficial insects, which will attack the pests, increased. You've got your small wasps, which are just taking off. Yep. OK? And now, they're a beneficial they're insect? They're a beneficial. They will, they will uh, actually lay their eggs in the larva of the cocoon of the DPM, uh, the DBM, which will... Uh, hatch out as a wasp, which is not the Latilla, which is the diamondback grub. Yeah, yeah. The grub, or the platella grub, or the aphid, gets in under that head at any stage. There's no way any spray can take them out. So we were spraying all the time to make sure that they could not get in under there. 
And the problem is they get in there at an early stage and it's very, very difficult, as Kevin said, to get them out. You yep. cannot get them out yep. unless you use pretty hard chemistry, yep. which takes out everything else. The old insecticide regime was largely a case of early and often, which usually dealt with the pests along with every other living creature. In the old regime of organophosphates and synthetic pyrethroids, it would take out all, everything. It would be a biological wasteland. You would have nothing alive in here, both predators and pests. In part, the adoption of integrated pest management mirrors changes in the chemicals available. Or is it chemicals changing to meet demand? Perhaps these are the beginnings of a virtuous circle. In any event, the result is a win for growers, some insects, and consumers. In the past, we would have had four, maybe five applications in the summer with the pressure we've had. But because we've been target specific, we spray twice with very soft chemistries. We've had a build up of beneficial insects in here, which have done a lot of the job for us. It's been a similar story for Matthew Bailey at Tautani. Light brown apple moth is the scourge of many vineyards. A light brown apple moth will target your bunches. The moth will lay its egg within the bunch before bunch closure. So you can just picture the little berries getting bigger and bigger until the bunch is fully closed. But inside there is a little caterpillar which will eat from inside out of the bunch, causing a lot, a lot of damage. The vineyard hasn't escaped entirely. Matthew Bailey's had to do some selective spraying. Importantly, that's left good populations of beneficial insects to keep the rest in check. I can see what's happened. You know, there's little damage out there, like 1% to 2%. And I could see that the potential, if they weren't there, we could have lost half the crop easily. We all know that uh, all around the globe, including in Australia, uh, consumers have thinking a bit more about sustainability and what we are doing for the planet. The settling will go down well overnight. For Loic Le Calvez and his winemakers, integrated pest management will ultimately be judged by the quality of the wine in the glass. All we want to do is become sustainable and give back to the planet some practices that we've been doing for years and years and we're now questioning ourselves thinking, well, is it something we really want to do or need to do? to get good quality grapes. Mark Cable estimates integrated pest management saves him about $300 on each hectare of broccoli. But there are other benefits. Greater reliance on biological control in one crop leaves other good bugs for the crop that follows, like the soil-dwelling mites that help prevent thrip in onions. It's simple, it's, it's straight to the point, it's neat, and I, and I think it's definitely something we can incorporate into our, into our packaging at Harvest Moon. From sceptic to enthusiast, Mark Cable is about to start labelling his products with an IPM logo. Eventually, he thinks there'll be a marketing edge. It's going to take time to educate the consumers retails, wholesalers, the whole way through the system. It, it, it will take time to educate, but yes, in the long run, we believe um, it's, it's, it's worthwhile and we believe that um, there'll be benefit there. We may not get any more for our product at the end of the day, but it may mean that we will maintain our market, and that's what it's all about. <laughs>